A good testing program starts with good tests. Remember the story in the Bible about the foolish man who built his house upon the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. So it is with a testing program built on inadequate data. Truly, this is for planning a program with a sound foundation lies in one's test with the utmost care. Otherwise, the most carefully executed plans for administering, scoring, interpreting, and using the results are worthless. There are two widely used methods for selecting a test which deserve to be exposed. The first of these may be designated as the let George do it method. There are three ways in which this method is applied. Sometimes the person responsible for making the choice arrives at his decision by asking his favorite test salesman whether his company has a suitable test. If he is more sophisticated, he may ask a number of salesmen to describe their products and then chooses the test which was given the best presentation. The second variation on the let George do it method is to base one's choice on what a neighboring school is doing. The person using this approach may be quite justified in his assumption that the neighboring school has used more sense than he has in choosing its tests. The third variation comes equipped with a self-polishing halo. The pious advocate of this approach seeks refuge from making his own decisions by relying on reviews by those hailed as experts, saints in the field of test and measurements. And one who points out that some of these reviews are strongly biased or the judgments are based on distorted facts and opinions is considered a heretic. It is a great comfort for users of this method to be able to cite chapter and verse in defending their choice of a test. Almost as bad as the let George do it approach is the pseudo-scientific approach. Usually it involves filling out a form for each test. The form includes spaces for the following items. Name of test, author, publisher, grade range, nature, administration time, forms, reliability, validity, ease of administration, scoring, interpretation, and cost. All of this information can be obtained from the test manual. You never need to open a single test booklet. Having dutifully recorded all these data for each of the tests being considered, the next step is to use this information in selecting the best test. At this point, the typical test user is bewildered, overwhelmed by a mass of data. He has no idea how he should weigh each factor. Unless he is a highly trained statistician, he is quite likely to misinterpret some of his data, particularly those related to reliability and validity. To protect his sanity and his ego, the poor man seizes upon the elements he is familiar with, makes his choice, and if he is clever, burns the evidence. Under brutal grilling, he will admit that his choice was determined by cost. Well, the answer sheets cost one cent less. Administration time. It's one class period shorter. Reliability. Well, 87 is higher than 86. Or maybe this tried and true method. I'm quite willing, in fact eager, to admit that each of the procedures I have condemned has some merit. Test salesmen or representatives are frequently quite helpful in locating a good test. And sometimes it is not published by their company. Knowing what other schools are doing will sometimes enable you to discover a really good test you might have overlooked. 
why they have chosen a given test may give you new insights in selecting your own test. You must consider such factors as cost, administration time, reliability, ease of administration, and so forth in choosing a test. A serious deficiency in one or two of these factors could be fatal to your entire program. But all these approaches fail to take into consideration the most important element of all in good test selection. How well does the test measure what you want it to measure? Are the things being measured important? Is there a proper balance of areas covered? Are all the important areas you are trying to teach included? No one, salesman, neighboring principal, learned reviewer, can answer these questions for you. Only you and your fellow teachers can supply the answers to these questions, and you can only do that by looking carefully at the test questions themselves, one by one. The task of making a careful examination of a test cannot be simplified. It is a time-consuming job. However, it can be more effectively accomplished if it is approached systematically. Here is one approach for your consideration. It is applicable primarily to the selection of an achievement test. For such tests as those of personality, aptitude and interests, other techniques must be used. Rule off a piece of paper in three columns, a narrow column on each side and a wide one in the middle. Label the first column item number, the second classification, the third relevance. Examine the first item, stem and options, in the test. What do you think it is measuring? Note the particular skills, understandings, type of material, and subject matter it seems to cover. You may go further and note the kinds of reasoning required. Recall, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, evaluation. Record your analysis of the item in the area labeled classification. Some tests come with ready-made classifications which can aid you in your analysis. For example, the sequential tests of educational progress, STEP, are accompanied by a teacher's guide. In it, you will find a rather detailed analysis of each item in the series. To illustrate, let's look at one of the items in STEP social studies, Form 3B, for grades 7 through 9. On page 13, we find a political cartoon. Associated with this cartoon are a number of items designed to test a student's ability to interpret the cartoon. 23 states, this cartoon was probably published a shortly before a local election, b shortly after a local election, c shortly before a national election, D, shortly after a national election. An analysis of this item appears in the STEP Teacher's Guide. It indicates that this item is attempting to determine the student's skill at drawing conclusions. The understanding required is related to the nature of our democratic society, the type of material, cartoon, and the subject matter, involves both American history and government. Now, back to our scheme for examining a test. Having classified the first item in his test, the teacher must judge how relevant this item is to his own teaching. Is the item taught? Should it be taught? Is it too easy or too difficult for your students? How important is it? Give the item a relevance rating of 0 to 5. 
a zero for an item considered inconsequential or irrelevant, a five for one closely related to your local objectives and student capabilities. Proceed with the following items until you have completed the test. Having done this for each of the tests you are considering, compare average relevance ratings for the various tests. In addition, and equally important, make an examination of the classification comments with two things in mind. First, are all important areas of teaching covered? It is wholly possible that a test may do an excellent job of testing six of the major areas you teach, but it may completely ignore four other equally important areas of instruction. You may still decide to use the test in spite of this deficiency. However, recognizing this shortcoming in the test, you will modify your interpretation of the test results and perhaps choose a supplementary standardized or teacher-made test for the neglected areas. Second, is there a proper balance of areas in the test? Or is too much emphasis being given to certain areas of instruction at the expense of other areas? Surely in your teaching, you carefully determine the relative importance of various topics to be covered. It is equally important if the test is to reflect adequately what you have taught to make sure it too has proper balance. Ideally, a test analysis of this sort is done by a group of teachers interested in the field covered by the test. Many heads are generally better than one at this work. Examination of a test in this fashion is most revealing and rewarding. You'll discover flaws in the test and shortcomings in your own teaching that were never evident before. Further, I'll guarantee that your use of test results will be improved. You'll be both more cautious and at the same time more respectful of the test and the scores you obtained.